Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel and it's been a very hot day in the UK, soaring temperatures, 32 point something degrees, hot it's been in all year, uh, record breaking yesterday it was, but it's still very hot today and uh, it's, I'm filming this at um, like 9 o'clock at night and it's still bloody hot. So I have the aircon unit running over there, I have my fan on up there running as well, so hopefully it's not going to be a lot of noise for you to listen to, so hopefully my mic will just pick me up not these noises that are going on at the moment, but let's try and stay nice and cool anyway. But I thought I'd try a bit of tech news to see how you guys get on with that. I'm trying to sort of stir things up on the channel. Uh, next week I get back to filming with my presenters, so they may come on board and do some stuff, tech stuff with us as well. And we may script a proper kind of show. I thought I'd throw this together, see how it actually goes, see what you guys think. And again, leave your comments below and tell me what you think anyway. Latest news in, the Oculus Quest updates lets you uh, easily invite other players. Um, so if you've got an Oculus uh, headset, so the Oculus is rolling out its uh, version 3.3, sorry, version 31, that's weird. I was going to say 3.1. Um, yeah, version 31 software update to the Quest and the Quest 2 headsets starting today. And it's filled uh, with some nice qu quality of life improvements. Uh, the big one is it's it'll be easier to invite friends and recent teammates who aren't friends to play a game or experience an app together. Uh, when you're in the game or in the app, pressing the Oculus button will pull up the universal menu as usual, but soon uh, more apps will be shown a new invite to app button next, next to the resume and the quit buttons. Uh, if a friend accepts your invite, you'll be able to see them in the menu and the feature will roll out uh, soon for other games. Other features coming up on the version 3.31 say 3.1 then, may or may not get as much use, depending on how you use your Quest headset. But, um, but nevertheless, important, uh, with the updates, the browser app will also be gain the ability to save and autofill passwords secure with an unlock pattern. Both the unlock pattern and passwords are stored on the device. Oculus says it's in the press release, so do check out the press release. Uh, I will put the links below for you for the press release. Oculus also adding send and receive receipts uh, to the Messenger app as well as, as uh, reaction emojis uh, straight from Facebook. Uh, admittedly, this should make it easier to respond to people instead of fumbling with a virtual keyboard. We don't want to be fumbling with a virtual keyboard. So they are awful things. Uh, if you're waiting for uh, version 31, uh, take your headset. Keep it in the mind that it may take a few weeks to arrive to yours. So stay tuned for that as well. Netflix, I think they're... Um, Netflix thinks games matter more than um, playing or buying movies. Should I say buying movies, not playing movies, buying movies. Um, as next next streaming uh, reviles, reviles to, like um, um, Prime Video, HBO Max, uh, Warner Media, focus on um, consolidating and studio acquisitions. If I can really say that word, Netflix instead of prioritizing its own service and investing into games over snapping up any available stu studio IP. It's a refreshing sh uh, shift away from buying stress stressed move movie uh, studios or long forgotten catalogs. But will it work? We'll have to find out, won't we? Um, hmm. TikTok. How many times do you go on TikTok and you're, you're like kind of scrolling through and you whoa, what the hell's that? Weird stuff. You, it ends up you engaging, looking at it for a little bit longer, and then you flick through, go through, and again, the next thing you come and visit again, you've got some more weird shit on there. Well, apparently, the algorithm is actually learning what you kind of list, watch and stuff. So if you see something really weird that comes up on TikTok on your phone, and you engage with it, it'll know that's something you're interested in. It's not me. It's more weird, isn't it? You kind of look at it and go, hmm, maybe, and then you flick past. So how does the algorithm know <laughs> from just pausing on it, that is what you like? There should be a like and dislike buttons, and that way you can teach the algorithms how it should function properly for the user, not guessing you may look on that weird video for 10 minutes or, or 10 seconds or, or something like that, that that is something you like. That's going to be really weird, isn't it? But obviously they've been using kind of YouTube's uh, format of algorithms on how to produce content so you kind of watch and put that in front of you for you. But I've come across a lot of stuff I kind of flick through and go, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't look at that, but apparently if you stay out for too long, if you see something really weird popping up really quickly, just swipe it off really quickly. Otherwise the algorithm is going, oh, you like that, we're going to give you more crap to your screen for it. There you go. <laughs> um, here's a new update. Clubhouse is no longer invites only. Oh, that's annoying. Um, Clubhouse. I had to get some friends to get us invited in. But I don't like Clubhouse. I don't like the way Clubhouse works. 
I think Clubhouse is kind of um, look for podcast guests. Um, jump on there. You might talk to some really weird people from all around the world. That's not a podcast. Podcast is where you actually invite people down that you want to have these kind of conversations and the conversations are quite structured. Uh, not pick up some random person around the world and have a chat to and call that a podcast. That's not really good. But um, apparently, um, the co-founder, um, Paul Davis and uh, Ron Synth, announced today that the app is no longer invites only. Around 10 million people are currently on the waiting list. Wow, 10 million people. Hmm, that's obviously definitely um, a busy app, but I'm, I don't like it, no. I prefer to invite um, people to podcasts as it's local to me. More interesting, real, real people, real life, real stories, kind of my tagline. Uh, but yeah, 10 million people are currently waiting on the waiting list. Uh, spokesman confirmed they are slowly be added to the app over time. So if you're a Clubhouse fan, comment below, let me know what you get from Clubhouse. What does it give you, Clubhouse, you know? What, what do you get from it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, interesting to hear your thoughts on that one. Here's a good deal for you. The latest iPad Pro and iPad Pro Air tablets are, are each $100 off from today. Uh, if you've been waiting for a sizable deal on the new M1 um, processor, equipped with a 12.9 inch Pro or the 10.9 inch um, iPad Air released last year, uh, you can save £100 on either models now from Amazon. From last year, I thought the new M1's coming out this year, or it's just come out this year. I don't know. It's probably where it's, where it's been written. Uh, and that's on Amazon deals. Starting with the iPad Pro, the base model in space grey, it comes with 128 gig of storage, costs sorry, $999 at Amazon. Uh, the £100 off is usually a uh, usual cost, which is uh, great considering that their in, um, inclusions are brilliant mini LED liquid retina uh, XDR display with more contrast, more colour depth than the previous models. I've been waiting for the new M1 to come out. It's, it's kind of getting... My thoughts on this, it's kind of getting weird because I want to get a Mac Mini to replace my iMac because my Mac's the old Intel one, i5, I mean it's old, old. And I, I like the M1 processor, it's got some great reviews on it. Um, no one's complained if it's slow, it's just really good, fast, great for editing. That's what I kind of need. Now, with all the models now coming out, you've got different variations. It's just now choosing, everyone, everyone, all of them's almost got the M1 processor and all the models. Same with the iPad Pro now, it's kind of like, what do I choose? Do I want to be editing? Well, I mean, the iPads really doesn't run a full version of editing suite on it, but there's obviously lots of apps you can do editing on. But the power in it is coming like quite efficient, quite slimline. That, that could be a replacement for video editing. So as long as you don't use Final Cut Pro, then that's a great way to use that because it fits in your bag, carry it around with you, nice and easy, edit on the go. But I've never actually got on with the apps, the editing apps are available for the iPad. I do like my Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to go down the Mac Mini route. Um, I like the um, the Mac they brought have all the different colours, but um, it's limited. Uh, screen's not as ma as big as I thought it might be. So I'm going to Mac Mini route. I brought myself a nice ultra wide screen for it, so it's going to look awesome once I get it. But really, Macs kind of change. You haven't got that variation in speeds anymore. All the modern new models across the board now are running the M1 processor equivalently the same, there's quite slight adjustments, there's a few USB ports or lightning ports, then the others, USB-C uh, variations, but again, it's like over style now. So it's, it's over color, look and style. What looks good on your bench? <laughs> That's the way you'll be choosing the Apple model now as well. And I would love to see Apple, uh, Apple bring out Final Cut Pro running on the iPad itself. That would be amazing. That'd be portability, that'd be mobile, because it is getting really good, especially with the new M1 process on it. That's my thoughts on it. Anyway, tell me if you like these um, tech um, reviews or tech updates, as I should call it. Comment below and let me know on them as well. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thumbs up, like the video. Thumbs down if you don't like this video. And if you do please comment, if you don't like these, let me know, because I would like to do some techie stuff along with other bits I normally do anyway. So it'd be nice to see if you enjoyed what I've done with these. You know, am I more fun? I'm trying to sort of like open myself up a bit more to make it more fun and more interesting as well. Again, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.